Greetings, diners, and welcome to another edition of the Collapse Cafe and Collapse Morning Wake Up Call of the Doomstead Diner. And, uh, yeah, I'm at it again. I'm back in front of the video camera. Okay? And, uh, I didn't expect to make a video today. I was going to take the day off. All right? Uh, I put up a magnum opus yesterday. Uh, the conversation that, uh, I had with George Mobus and Hugo Vardy and K-Dog regarding the effects of coronavirus in uh, Italy and down in Seattle and some projections and uh, speculation on uh, where it's going to lead and so forth. Uh, and, uh, and so I was going to take the day off because tomorrow... Uh, it's St. Patty's Day, and uh, I'm making corned beef and cabbage for St. Patty's Day so the diners can enjoy that meal without going out to an Irish bar, all right? Uh, you can at least look at it here on the diner, uh, and I'm trying out a different recipe this year, all right? Even though last year's recipe was really, really good. Uh, Experimentation is the name of the game in cooking. You should uh, never rest on your laurels, okay? Uh, you can always improve on things. Uh, or just go for a different flavor, uh, which is what I'm doing this time. I'm not changing the recipe that much. Uh, and so I didn't expect to do a video. And then, uh, so this morning, you know, I had my usual breakfast. Uh, you know, I had some blueberries and sour cream and a bowl of Cheerios uh, and a hard-boiled egg, all right, which is uh, good. Uh, you know, and I don't usually need much more than that in a day. Uh, that's enough calories for me and enough protein and all the rest of that stuff. And then the usual vitamin pills, okay? Uh, so, I'm uh, pretty full, okay? And then plus, I'm going to be cooking the corned beef and cabbage actually later this evening. So, uh, at that time, I will probably, you know, when it comes out of the pressure cooker, uh, I will probably cut off a couple of fresh slices uh, to have right after uh, it's finished cooking, which, you know, I mean, it's great uh, when they get it right, right away. Uh, it's still really good the next day, microwaved. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you almost can't tell the difference, so... And you can put it in a steamer tray or whatever if you're serving a large number of people. Uh, you don't have to microwave. Uh, that's a great thing about corned beef and why it's good at uh, a bar. You know, they can make a whole bunch of them up and uh, then just uh, throw them into the steamer trays uh, one after another uh, for as long as the patrons are there uh, getting shit-faced drunk <laughs> and so forth. Uh, so, uh, but they won't be there uh, just St. Patty's Day, okay? Uh, all the parades are canceled. Parades in Ireland are canceled. Parade in New York City is canceled. The Irish cops will not be able to march down Fifth Avenue or whatever avenue it is that they march down. I've never been to the uh, uh, St. Patty's Day Parade in New York. It's one of the parades I miss over the years. Uh, and uh, so there's uh, a lot of sad Irishmen today. Uh, uh, and planning on uh, probably getting drunk at home instead. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but more developments in the coronavirus panic have uh, caused me to uh, revise my plan. And so I'm making another vid. And so I needed a meal to go with the vid. All right. And so for today, uh, we're having... A little Japanese, okay? Uh, and we have uh, over here, and you can see the picture at the beginning of the video of this stuff, okay? Uh, we have sashimi, and I've got some uh, uh, mackerel, and some uh, tuna, and salmon, and yellowtail. Uh, all picked up down when I was visiting with Keith 
in Seattle uh, a few weeks ago, and it's been in the freezer. Uh, and it's as good as new, okay? It took the plane trip in my makeshift uh, cooler arrangement that I'd made out of a cardboard box and uh, stuffed it with paper and stuff and then put clothing around it. So it was very well insulated, and uh, the stuff was basically still frozen when I got here. Uh, and uh, then I threw it in the freezer for later use, and this is the first later use of that uh, sashimi that I bought at, uh, I think it's called Umajiwaya, or something along those lines. <clears throat> it's an Asian food store in Seattle. We don't have any of those up here on the last great frontier. And uh, so uh, it's one of the things that I look forward to uh, shopping there hmm? when I go there. Uh, but I won't be going there anytime soon because uh, I am sequestering, self-sequestering, I think they call it, which I do all the time anyway. Uh, but now it's extra, you know, super self-sequestering. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, what else do I have in addition to the uh, uh, sushi or sashimi, uh, which is just the fish, okay? Uh, I don't need the whole rice ball and all the rest of that and wrap it up. Uh, I can do that too, or I used to be able to. I'm not sure I could <coughs> still roll sushi with my crippled arm, but, uh, but you know, for me, I just like the fish. Uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, and to go to dip that in, I have uh, wasabi, there's wasabi on the plate too, and some pickled ginger. Uh, you should always have that with your sashimi. Uh, it really enhances the flavor of the fish. And uh, on the other side of the uh, table uh, today is uh, shrimp tempura, or actually it's shrimp and vegetable tempura. So I got a shrimp, and I got, uh, uh, this is a, uh, a sweet potato, and this is a... Uh, uh, I think this is a piece of my uh, uh, Italian eggplant, and uh, this over here is a regular potato, all right? <coughs> Slice a regular potato. And up front, a shrimp. Uh, so, I got a little meat protein, I got uh, carbos, a little veggie in there. Not a whole lot, you know, but uh, it's okay, because I took my vitamins this morning. Huh? Uh, and to dip that in, I have tempura dipping sauce. Okay, which is good. And then uh, to drink, to go with the meal today, it's a Japanese meal, so sake, ah, right? I have sake. Uh, and because this is a coronavirus video, all right, another one, we have Corona beer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just love that. <laughs> I couldn't ask for more <laughs> making videos. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's the meal, and let's get on to <clears throat> the action for the day, actually the last two days, all right? The news basically hit the general public, finally, uh, after, uh, you know, a couple of weeks of poo-pooing that it wasn't any big fucking deal by uh, the uh, clown-in-chief. Uh, Donald Dietrich, Trump Trumpovetsky, and uh, people realize, so oh, this is uh, really a problem, you know, oh, yeah, uh, and all the lying in the world by the POTUS is not going to make it go away, okay, uh, it's going to keep coming uh, for quite a while, uh, and how long that is is still an open question somewhat, uh, I'll discuss that a little bit, well, we discussed it with George and uh, Hugo and uh, K-Dog yesterday, but uh, I'll talk about it a little more. Uh, but what the reaction was today and yesterday uh, is uh, panic buying uh, all over the country. Even up here on the last great frontier, we have where we now have one case uh, reported this morning. All right, of uh, somebody that flew in from. Uh, the lower 48 on a military transport, and is now supposedly self-sequestering. Uh, and uh, I have no additional reports at this time of uh, more cases yet in Alaska. Although there will be, okay? Because we have a large number of 
military personnel and uh, oil workers that fly up and down to the lower 48 uh, on a weekly basis or bi-weekly. They usually do two weeks on, two weeks off like that, uh, the oil people. So, uh, so coronavirus is going to get here just a little bit slower because we are remote and so forth, and our population is small, uh, relatively speaking. So, it's taken a while. Uh, it will take a while. Uh, but we'll, we'll get it eventually. Uh, and uh, so, even up here, though, uh, the panic buying uh, is going on. Uh, I went yesterday for a prep run to my local food superstore, which is Three Bears. Uh, and uh, at Three Bears, all the paper goods sold out. Okay, all the soups, canned soups, sold out. All right, uh, all the uh, uh, frozen pizzas, okay, not all of them, but most of them sold out. All right, uh, and uh, but mysteriously to me, until I thought about it, uh, all the fresh produce, which I would think, you know, perishable stuff would be the first stuff to go, right? You know, because uh, you know, uh, if per perishable stuff doesn't show up, then you have no no uh, rec recompense or whatever ability to uh, correct that, unless you can grow it yourself, uh, which I cannot. Uh, I don't have uh, space to grow stuff, and plus, I don't exactly have the world's greenest thumb. <laughs> you know, plants uh, look at me and they die. <laughs> uh, and then I went to Walmart today, okay, bigger store, bigger chain, you know, better distribution system, and same story, same exact stuff, not on the shelves. Uh, they didn't have uh, the paper goods, they didn't have the canned, food, canned, food, canned soups, and they didn't have the frozen pizzas. Uh, and they also didn't have any eggs. Now that's more fresh produce, so uh, that is a little bit was to me at the time a little more understandable. So, but then I started thinking about it, and the reason for this is because this is not a failure of just-in-time delivery. What this is, is people going out and buying, people who don't prep up, who aren't preppers, uh, who now get, you know, scared out of their wits, and so they're buying stuff that's long-lasting, you know, that they know is long-lasting and they're going to need. So, you know, canned foods, they know, canned, canned goods, they last a long time. Uh, pizzas, uh, frozen pizzas, they got space in the freezer, they, they last forever, okay? Well, almost forever, I think. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that and the paper goods, you know, well, everybody, everybody shits. <laughs> so they need uh, uh, toilet paper, and, you know, if you only have a couple of rolls in the house, and there's no toilet paper on the shelves for a week or something like that, then, you know, it could be rough. <laughs> there's leaves and stuff, though. You, you can substitute for toilet paper. Uh, it doesn't have that nice, soft, Charmin feel on your ass, but, <laughs> but you know, newspaper will do the job <laughs> if you need to. And don't flush it, though, all right? Crumple it up, put it in a bag, and throw it in the dumpster, all right? You don't want to clog up your toilet. Uh, you know, the uh, toilet paper, it breaks down in there, and uh, uh, so it doesn't clog your toilet, unless you use, like, loads of it. Some <laughs> people just <laughs> pull stuff off the roll. <laughs> I don't Anyway, uh, so people are buying long-lasting goods, all right? Uh, and... Uh, and they're uh, vacating the shelves because of it. But here's the deal now. Because this is not really a failure of just-in-time delivery, but uh, a, psycho a psychological phenomenon of panic buying, in a week or so, those stocks are going to be, re uh, those shelves are going to be restocked. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, the people who went out the last couple of days and bought all this shit, they're going to feel a little foolish. And, you know, some of them, have bought 
so much of this stuff that they don't usually eat, you know. Uh, they bought like every can of every type of soup, you know. But do they actually eat cream of celery soup ever? Probably not. Uh, it's not a favorite for most people. Uh, and so they're going to have, you know, uh, two dozen cans of cream of celery soup because that was the only one left on the shelf, which they'll never have. Uh, well, until the real shit the shit it's fan day comes. Mm -hmm. uh, and just in time delivery does fail, which will happen. But it hasn't happened yet. Uh, and uh, for us preppers, for myself, you know, I went out to the store yesterday just, you know, to pick up a few items. I wasn't really expecting to see what I saw in the store, uh, the empty shelves and so forth. You know, I'm like, uh, well, you know, Alaska uh, only has one case of coronavirus. And, you know, this is not a real problem yet. But, uh, but because of the, uh, the herd mentality and the people watching the news, everybody went out and emptied out the shelves. Uh, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, and then, uh, so I called up one of my cripple helpers and I said, you know, you want to come over and go over to Walmart with me? Uh, not, you know, on the, on the dime. I said, I'll buy you lunch. And, uh, she said, okay. Uh, cause she, she, uh, sells stuff in a, like a market, uh, usually on Mondays. So she's not working for the agency and, uh, they closed the market because it's uh, held in a government building and all the government buildings currently uh, are closed uh, uh, and uh, when they'll reopen uh, uh, I don't know nobody knows uh, the schools here I believe are still open uh, but not the case in places now like uh, New York City where uh, Mayor de Blasio uh, reverse course and uh, I shut shut it all down, and uh, in Seattle, same deal, no school, uh, public schools in addition to the colleges now, and uh, you know it's a real question uh, how to for the seniors, and that's a you know case in California I think it was, uh, might be Washington, but no it's California Kevin Newsom, uh, they said you know seniors especially because we're so vulnerable. We should uh, practice complete self-isolation, not leave your apartment, which I don't usually, all right? I mean, once a week I go out and I shop. Uh, uh, the rest of the time I'm in my cave. And, uh, but I am prepped, okay? Uh, I, and I, I cook for myself and stuff like that, so you don't. I've got food and stuff, but there's a lot of seniors, old folks, whatever you want to call them, uh, that, you know, they're usually older than I am, you know, 80, 85, like that, and they, they no longer can cook, and, you know, a lot of them don't really have their wits with them too much, uh, and, uh, so, where are, there are five million seniors above the age of 65 in California. Where are they going to get the staff to go to all those senior homes where these people can't leave and get them fed and make sure that they have their medications and uh, aren't smearing feces on the walls <laughs> and all the rest of the stuff that you know can happen uh, once you uh, get Alzheimer's. Uh, so, you know, that's that's just a, another clusterfuck waiting to happen. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. And uh, then, uh, finally, there's the question of how long is this going to last? Okay? Now, all of the states that have put on these restrictions have said uh, two weeks. Okay? They're, you know, they've got it set up for, for two weeks. For the next two weeks... This is the, just the rules, all right? But, you know, the virus is not going to be gone in two weeks. I'm sorry. It's going to be bigger. And, uh, so what are they going to do then? 
as uh, you start to see social breakdown uh, go on. Uh, you know, we've got the problem of all these people who aren't working now, who live paycheck to paycheck, and who won't be able to pay their rents. You know, or, or is there going to be a moratorium on rents? And then what about the landlords who own the places? Is there going to be a moratorium on them paying their uh, mortgages to the banks that, you know, loan them money to put up apartment complexes like this, like the one I live in? Uh, and if the banks do do that moratorium, who's going to make the banks whole? You guessed it. The Federal Reserve Bank, okay? will start forking over money to the banks in order to keep them solvent. So, you know, the Fed keeps the banks solvent, the banks keep the uh, uh, rentiers solvent, and the Joseph expect for the time being, as long as that daisy chain goes on, probably won't have to pay his rent. Probably. But, at some future date, when the, uh, the virus is history, which it will be eventually, uh, either from natural causes, oh, I really want to eat that tempura right now, but not on camera, uh, or uh, a, a vaccine will be developed, uh, and that's going to come down the pipe uh, at some point, uh, but the question is how long and how many doubling periods for the virus in the meantime, uh, those are open questions as of now. So, uh, we just have to see how it progresses. I hope that you are prepped. You've been uh, a diner, hopefully, uh, and know, know the score and uh, have plenty of food. And I have plenty of food. I mean, look at how I'm eating. You know, these folks out there, they're eating, you know, canned cream celery soup. <laughs> uh, and I'm having a, a, a wonderful... Japanese meal uh, tonight and tomorrow I'll have a, a nice Irish meal uh, and I haven't decided on the day after that I'll come up with something though I'm sure uh, so I hope you're all prepped with your foods and uh, your basics your toilet paper <laughs> and uh, and we'll uh, make it through this uh, first of many trials to come as we uh, march down, or really downhill ski, <laughs> the uh, far side of Seneca Cliff and uh, head into the post-collapse world, which is going to be quite different than the one we currently live in. So, put on your uh, fireproof BVDs and get ready. And that's all the doom. This time until next time. Here on the Cooking Zone and Collapse Cafe of the Doomsday Diner. Hasta la sashimi and tempura. <laughs>